Hello everybody, welcome back. Can you believe it? It's just April the 30th. I am, I just can't believe it's April 30th. It's our last towel today. Towel number 12. It's been uh, so much fun doing this. Anyway, here's my little board. I wrote down towel number 12, our last towel, sad face. But we've had so much fun, happy face. So true. Um, this towel is going to just do a, something different than what we did yesterday using the green because when I was doing the hem and the green, I just loved that big chunk of green. So I came up this morning and just played around a tiny little bit to figure out what I'm going to do. And what I decided to do was uh, we need 30 inches for our, our towel. I'm going to do 25 one inch stripes all in green and they're all going to be using the left hand treadles because the left hand treadles make the stripes these two areas here are all threaded on the same harnesses and the left hand treadles are making these blocks here and here weave weft predominant so if green is the majority of my weft all the time it's going to look like green on green on the green no matter what the tie up is but we want the green to be covering up as much of the stripes as possible so it reads like this big big stripe of green it's reading as a stripe of green so the towel is going to be a predominantly green towel on one side the other side when we turn it over is going to be the opposite it's going to have lots of stripe because the other side will be warp predominant Anyway, fun things to play with this. And then I thought I'll just put a four pick zinger every inch and I'm going to run through three colors. So those three colors are here. They are peacock purple, so two colors from the warp and this magenta, which was a leftover bobbin that I have a lot of. Um, so I'm just gonna run through that over and over and over again, putting these little zingers every inch. Um, when I was trying to figure out how to arrange those colors in my inches, if I have 25 inches or 25 stripes that are one inch long, that takes up 25 inches of my 30. And I would have 24 little stripes in between. And um, somebody emailed me the other day and said that they have so much they, you have a lot of problems with arithmetic, well, or math. I do too. I, I'm just useless with it. I always have been. But the one thing that has always saved me is drawing a picture. So if I'm trying to figure out how this is all going to work out and be symmetrical with my three colors moving in and out, how do I do that? I don't try and figure it out using my head. Well, I use my head, but I use my eyes more. I draw 24 lines and then I, so I did it two ways. I approached it two ways and I called those three colors ABC. So it's ABC, ABC, ABC all the way across and it works out perfectly. They will all be the same. Oh no, that's down here. ABC, 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 sorry. I can't read upside down very well. It's another thing I can't do. This one here is symmetrical. So I started these on the sides on my 24 stripes, A, B, C, A, B, C, until I get to the center and I know it will be a B. Two different ways to manage those colors in the stripe. One will be a symmetrical management of the color. This one will just be those three colors running through each other over and over and over again. One's not right, one's not wrong, they're just different. And uh, to keep things easy, I'm doing this one. <laughs> the simple one, ABC, ABC, over and over and over. And I have them laying in my box here beside me. So I'll just take them in their order and there you go. So each one of those stripes is four picks. Let's get back to this sheet. Each one of those stripes is four picks and five stripes of those four picks equals 20 picks per inch. And that is divisible by five and that will give us our 30 inches. 
So the math all works out. And uh, the easiest way to get there is to draw pictures. All right, but we'll have all of this for you in the pattern when we get that done. And just one last thing to remind you, or to remind you of the things that I have been talking about through all of these 12 towels. Every single day I came to the loom with my graphic designed and defined. I knew what I was going to do. Sometimes I changed my mind with the color. Sometimes I maybe even changed some detail within that graphic. But for me, graphic always drives the design of the finished piece. Even when I'm thinking about it, it's, it's the division of space. That graphic is what grounds me in all my weaving. Color is secondary and structure is always third. So I just wanted to remind you of this thought process that I use and it's, it's yours to use. I go into it in unbelievable depth uh, in season two of the Online Guild. So let's get started. You'll see, I'm going to do my hem in green. So these left hand treadles are weaving this block weft predominant. And that's why it looks green. huge raindrops. You might actually be able to hear it. <sighs> cool. Yeah, and it was sunny uh, not too long ago. <laughs> I actually thought I might go out work in the garden after this, but not happening now. All right. So, you know what? I just, uh, just want to do something. See, you change your mind, it's all good. I really like it when I put that little three strand of fuchsia at the very bottom as a divider. And I'm just going to, I don't have an extra shuttle and I'm not taking it on out, but at the very beginning, so that's the end of my hem, I'm putting this in. Whoops, sorry, I gotta change my shed. And it'll be that little bead across the bottom. Do that splicing we learned the other day. It's going to be cute because it's weft predominant here showing as a little bead. And then it sort of disappears in the middle, but on the other side, it'll be weft predominant. These little details uh, make pieces of weaving something special. They're worth the time and effort to put in. Okay. So I'm continuing on now with my next pick and I'm back to my green. My first one inch. I am so 
so glad I did that because it just it's being tied down by every third warp thread that those three strands so right in here it is weaving like a piece of ribbon and then here it disappears and it just pops out every fourth thread because there's three up so it's just like this little tiny dot in here and over here it's like a ribbon gorgeous little detail <clears throat> if i do say so myself <laughs> Okay, there's my first inch. My foot is ready to move into the other one and I'm going to take my first color, which is Peacock. And just four picks. Now I'm back to my thing again. I'll do this stuff. I started on the wrong trail. <laughs> my and I knew that because my foot hit my other foot. My foot was in the right place, being the little bumper, but I only got three picks in there, so. I'm just scalloping the other the green up the side. <clears throat> That's the full sequence. Looks like a box of crayons. <laughs> very, very cheerful, happy towel.
too soon. So now I'm back at the beginning again. This would have looked beautiful in, uh, with wider stripes as well. Mm, fun. in today just for this filming it's her day off but she said she would come and do it my sweet my little sweetheart <laughs> yay Elizabeth <laughs> combination you want. You just slap this graphic on top of other color combinations and same same. like these little one inch stripes that are developing up the black here that little edge another reason why i went with the one inch was that it's going to make this black look like a little lovely ribbon running up the side of the fabric to them. Industrial fabrics, the pattern just runs right off the side. I don't want my fabrics to look like that. They're special. They're little paintings.
whipping right along in this one. Maybe coming down the other side. Jenny wants to know what you're going to be making next. Hmm. Well, you know, I don't want to change the tie up. <laughs> now that I got this sucker all tied up, I think I will use the same structure. But I, I haven't really thought about it. I really have to start working on uh, some pieces for next year's online guild. We're always working ahead on those episodes. Um, so, in 2021, we're going to do laces. I know. We'll see. I have to get all these hems. 12 towels, hem. You know what that's like. <laughs> also have to start really getting out out in the garden that time of year when everything happens all at once and you wish you had an extra 24 hours in every day you blink and the grass has grown a foot <laughs> and every weed out there find an open patch. And then, and then there's just running a business every day. <laughs> finally came out of the booth last night but well, by the end of the day they came out and then of course those four miserable old hens they wouldn't let them back in <laughs> last night at about eight o'clock Grant and I are wandering all over trying to get them and coax them into corners and nab them it was uh would have been entertaining for anyone watching <laughs> Okay, now I'm not going to do what I did, well I've already done it, what I did the other day, yesterday, or I didn't measure soon enough. Well, I know we're near, nowhere close. Oh, there we are. Thanks, Elizabeth. See, she can see. <laughs> I couldn't see it. Thank you. Okay, there's my hem right there. Oh, we're just 13 inches in. I'll put a pin in it right there at my 13 and I'll write that number down because I just might forget. That's my method. I'm at 13.
you know, if I was going to do this again, the next one I would do, I would weave a full square of the green and just make it a big square of green with stripes every square. It's another way of doing it. So many things. anybody out there watching today we we uh, aired a new episode of the online guild so you can have a double whammy of me <laughs> half an hour here 40 minutes here and then a heck of a long time over there the the um, point tool gaps are so f unbelievable oh, things we do the graphics we get with those ideas. Patricia has a question about your beater handle. Mm -hmm. She has a David and there's no handle and she's wondering if it would be worthwhile to have one made. Um, the David is a, is a smaller loom than this. So I, I mean, you could try it, but it's uh, it doesn't have the same depth in here, I don't believe. I've never missed it on the David. I have three Davids in the studio that we weave on all the time. And honestly, I have never really missed it there. One, two, three, four. Nice on the string, nice on bigger loom. on your looms you guys tell me what you're weaving <laughs> you ask me all these questions well I'm gonna ask you a question you know this is weaving in so perfectly at 20 ends per inch 20 picks per inch and uh, when I learned to weave I was taught that the proper set for 8 2 cotton and twill was 24 ends per inch 24 picks per inch and you know I would have to beat the living daylights out of it to get it to balance and the fabric was much much firmer than I wanted uh, so you might want to try this if you never tried 2 8 cotton in twills uh, 20 ends per inch, 20 picks per inch, give it a whirl. I am not beating delicately, but it's a perfect beat, one single beat, 
and it's making it super easy to get my 20 picks. You can hear that I'm not reading delicately. So if it had four more ends in it and you were trying to get a balanced cloth, that means that you'd be putting four more ends in the warp per inch plus four more picks in the weft per inch, which is eight more threads in an inch. That's a lot of more yarn in an inch. say what they're weaving? Yeah, we have lots of people Good. weaving things. Awesome! Jan is weaving a Grey Tones table runner with Star and Roses Overshot. Oh, wonderful. And she is setting up for the Twill Gamp next. Yay. And Patricia is weaving a 4x4 Twill woolen shawl for her nephew. Nice. Jenny's weaving a Symmetry. Oh, great. And Allison's got some Harris Tweed plaid going on, using up bits and bobs. <laughs> Randy is just finishing up a Robin Spady workshop warp. Oh, great. Robin gets a great workshop. Uh, and she's doing towels next. Connie loved the last twill on the online guild so much she's doing it again. <laughs> Selma's working on the first assignment of guild season number two. Oh, so we have a lot of guild memories out there. Yeah. Uh, Cindy has a warp threaded for twill gamp, not ours. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay, sweetie. <laughs> uh, Marty's working on towels and overshot pillow samplers. Marty, Marty Nathan's. Hi, Marty. It is Marty Nathan's. <laughs> <laughs> I blew you a kiss. Oh, I missed the kiss. Sorry, Marty. Oh, you got half a kiss. Okay. Wait, here. Okay. <laughs> I remember kissing your cheek in a workshop. I remember I loved what you did so much. I went up and gave you a big kiss. I think you were shocked. <laughs> did that happen? Was that you? I'm positive it was you. <laughs> What else? Gail's putting on a straight draw twill and we'll have 12 different structures from Davidson Book of Sample Set. Oh, great. And Liza just finished the small threading scan. Whoops. Whoa, you're busy and that's awesome. Let's start on the right track. Randy wants to know if she can get, join the guild at any point or does she need to wait until the year season begins again? Randy, you can join anytime you want. Nothing ever goes away. All the videos for all the seasons are there. It's $99 Canadian a year. It, I really feel it's extremely good value, especially if you're living in the United States and your dollar's worth like twice as much as ours. <laughs> so you, it's, uh, it, it's, I think a really great way to do it. Uh, and you can, I, I believe that 
people should do this, do the episodes in order, unless of course they're quite uh, fluent in dressing their moon. And then you can just start with season two, which is color and design. It is the foundational workshop of everything that I teach because color and design for me is the foundation uh, of cloth. Structure, structures live in families in my mind. And we work our way from plain weave to twill to laces. And eventually we'll get to unit swaps and profiles. Uh, but it will be easy to understand because everything builds on what we've learned before. And there's so much to learn about weaving. It's just crazy. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Not trusting my eyeball today. Um, so yeah, you betcha. It's a 365-day membership, Randy. It, it expires the 365 days from the day you purchase it. Plus, there's tons of um, PDFs. I almost always call them PFDs. <laughs> Personal flotation devices on paper. Um, the last few years of my of when I taught workshops here. I've been teaching for 35 years and, or maybe longer, but the last 10 years of my teaching, I only taught on salt spray. I stopped traveling. I do like doing three-day workshops because I always felt I was just getting started and I had to leave. And, it, and that wasn't fulfilling for me. Um, so, uh, I taught those workshops here on Salt Spring, and people would come for five days. And then I realized that I had people not wanting to come to take the workshops in the order that I really think it's necessary to, to take them in. So then I made it so that you had to come and take them in order if you wanted to come. We had, we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on our, our wait list every year, so I I was kind of lucky in that sense that I could make that call. And I made that call so that the educational experience was one that I felt would be the richest. Um, so that is how I'm presenting all of this curriculum in the online guild, the same way I would do it here or if I was teaching in a university, I would have everyone learn a specific way. It's not right or wrong, it's just my way. But what I've always found is that if you learn color and design right at the beginning, it's the first thing you become confident with uh, after you've learned to dress your loom. Those weavers are the weavers that are the most creative because they've learned, it's not artsy fartsy stuff. This is solid design theory and color theory presented in a way that anybody could understand. If you learn that right off the bat, you just ace everything from then on because you have a foundation. You have a strong basement holding up your knowledge. Okay, that was 13. I even remembered it in my little peeny brain. 13 and 13 is 26. Move the needle to there. We only have a few more inches. 26. Oops. Oh, and we're coming to the end for sure. I'm just gonna go fix something at the back. I'll be right back. Don't come, I don't want them to see the mess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna hide my mess. back all those threads I miscounted and threw out the back and my floating salvages are thrown out there. It's a mess, <laughs> but it's working. Clean that up later. Okay, one, two, three, four, there it is. Our last stripe. 
sequence, our last sequence. And we're going to take all of it off. For your viewing enjoyment. liberate many bobbins today. And now I'm going to put that little bead in again. This guy is on the first treadle. They're clucking away. There's something going on. Some some kerfuffle. Someone's in the yard. found a worm or something. <laughs> <laughs> for for so any much. of you who out there who've never raised chickens, they are so much entertainment. They have huge entertainment value. Um, they all start to cluck when somebody lays. So it's like, oh my god, she laid an egg. She laid an egg. Tell everybody, and the whole flock starts going. Bruh, 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 bruh. It's wonderful. I couldn't imagine my life without chickens. Crazy, huh? <laughs> Usually people say that about their partner. <laughs> well, I couldn't imagine my life without my partner either. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I do love my chickens. We don't have a rooster right now. We haven't had a rooster for um, three years now. 
And when we ha need to have larger numbers of pins, you need to have a rooster to sort of keep them in line. Because, uh, you know, there's that all those sayings of uh, pecking order. Hens will insist on a pecking order. And they can be so mean. And a rooster calms them down. He, <laughs> he lays them and lays down the rules every day. Uh, but when you have a smaller flock, you can do that without a rooster. So we are keeping a smaller flock now, simply because I can't sleep with the rooster. <laughs> the rooster was waking me up constantly. He drove me nuts after a while, the years and years of roosters. And uh, as I get older, I sleep less and less. And so having a rooster going off at three in the morning wasn't doing much for my sleep. So when our last one bit the dust, <laughs> Uh, I said, okay, that's it. No more roosters. And it's been good. Because we don't have very many birds anymore. Just, just, uh, well, we have 12 now. But that's about as many as you can have before things get out of hand. We'll have to see. Okay, so what I'm just going to do, because we're going to cut this off right now. We're right at the end. I can see the rod is just going to come up over the back. This baby's done. So that was a 13 yard warp, sort of giving myself 36 inches per towel and that extra yard was take up and uh, anyway, it's worked out darn tootin'. Fine, super fine. I'm going to throw a few picks of black just to hold that in because when I take this off, the first this little bit here is going to want to come out and uh, and it's not allowed. So I'm going to use my tabby treadles way out here and weave an inch or so of plain weave just so I can zigzag, zigzag nicely. Okay, that is all we need. So our beautiful warp is done. And let's have a look at it. Got my big scissors again. When I cut this, it's all gonna pull out probably. Ooh, don't cut too far, Jane. There, there goes the rods pulling it out. It's done. It's toast. But, so look at, this is the back side of that towel that we wove today. Is that not fabulous? So we've got all this striping on this side, and then this is the side that we wove facing us. So that's another great thing about turn twill is that you get these, uh, these fabrics with double faces, and uh, they're very exciting. And they're just as beautiful. No matter what happens, I always find them that they're just as beautiful. Okay, so here's today's towel. Here's yesterday's towel. And it's going to look pretty much the same on both sides. I can flip it over. Maybe a little more distinct on this side. The striping looks a little more distinct here. But really, they're the same when they're washed. Here's my play. Here's the point twill towel where we just made all of the threads or the squares the size of the bobbin, what was on the bobbin. Beautiful. Point treadling. This is the broken treadling towel using Euroflax linen. It's much, much wider than, like, there is the difference in the width. So that heavier linen pushed this out. And here's a nice little pinwheel, pinwheel baby. You know, I wish, when I look at this, I wish that I had just made that one repeat. It's in the center, a little more delicate. It's the only thing I wish so far of everything I'm looking at. This is going to be so beautiful. Both sides are ever slightly different. Look at the 
I don't know if you can see the patterning that's sort of happening in this four by four section. Just, I don't know. Looks like little curly cues. That's coming from the pinwheel treadling. What's this one? This one, oh, this is our basket weave into twill. Using up lighter colors, softer colors. Uh, a little bit of play. This is our straight draw on just a regular little sequence. Using up colors in a gradation, in and out. <laughs> Think there's enough towels on here, girls and boys? And here is Houndstooth. See? See how nice that looks with just one smaller line? I think that looks better than this one, which was similar in graphic, but that pink's too big. Proportionately, it it's not nice. <laughs> I don't like it. Anyway, um, cut it off this end. Now there's lots of garbage on the floor. <laughs> I throw everything on the floor and then once a week I come in and sweep it up whether it needs it or not. <laughs> I said this long. <laughs> anyway, look at this. Oh my gosh. There. So I have some work ahead of me. Plus there's the four that we've already taken off. And I'm going to do something with this idea that this warp I'm going to uh, I'm gonna write to you about it in the newsletter on May the 12th something exciting <laughs> so it's been a wonderful I don't know it's been three weeks now I think that we've been doing this most days of the week and uh, I hope it's cheered you up I'm always with you uh, and I wish you peace of mind and safe, good health. And I love you tons. And I'll see you again. We'll do it again sometime. But I, but not, not right away. <laughs> but we will. I promise. We'll do it again. Okay. Love you. Bye.